Greetings and blessings, blessings and greetings, blessed souls. This is Don Zosigovin from Kiesa Cronites, Brooklyn, New York. It is now the first day of Chodesh Nisan, the month of miracles, the month of kindness, not only for the children of Israel, for all the blessed B'nai Noach in the world, the children of Noah, descendants of those who emerged from the ark over 4,113 years ago. I'd like to start off this next humble submission for your blessed ears, minds, and hearts, and souls, blessed souls, with Proverbs by King Solomon, Shlomo Melech. Picking up from where we left off yesterday, from chapter 1, verse 7. Yirat Adonoi Reshit Da'at Chochma Umusar Avilim Bazu. The fear of the Almighty is the beginning of knowledge. Foolish ones scorn wisdom and discipline. Shma Beni Musar Avicha Ba'altitosh Torat Imecha. Hear, my child, the discipline of your father, and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Ki Leviat Chen Hem Leroshecha. For they are an adornment of grace for your head and a chain for your neck. This it says, what a wonderful teaching from King Solomon, Shlomo Melech, written over 27, maybe 2800 years ago. And I'd like to connect it directly to one of his descendants, Baba Cherebi, who wrote a letter in 1978 addressing the issue of the need and he gave encouragement to incorporate psychotherapy techniques which were compatible with Torah to allow Jewish people and eventually to widen out for even the Bnei Noach to shift away from what at that time was a very popular movement probably starting from the mid to late 60s the idea of getting involved of forms of meditation and heaven have mercy upon us that were openly in associated with Avodah Zorah, idolatry. And the Rebbe went through a litany of uh, conditions that would have to be made if a Jewish institution would be established, not that it should be formally uh, branded as a Jewish institution, but rather one where they, those who attended it, whether on an outpatient basis, perhaps for those who needed more, on an inpatient basis, would have access to Kof Shafud, keeping the Shabbat for those who want to keep the Shabbat, the nation of Israel, M. Zazot, just like we see today in hotels and institutions where a person wants to have access to kosher food and all the amenities of a kosher lifestyle according to Torah. But at the end of that letter, the Rebbe made a very important point, which to me connects back to this whole idea that the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Most High, is that part of our fearing of the Most High is to make sure that our relationships do not trample upon the rights and free will of others. And I'm going to read directly what's been translated into English, or perhaps the letter was originally written in English by the Rebbe. This is going back to 1978, which would have been Tafshin Lamed Ches. And this is how it goes. And regarding uh, guiding people in, in a psychotherapeutic manner, or mode, the Rebbe said as follows, I have always been aware of any method that deprives a person of the free exercise of his will, and which puts him in the power of another person, even temporarily. We have made an exception to that in the case where we're talking about saving a life. So we're not talking about a circumstance where it's souls, where like, say, for instance, you see a person choking, and you play the Heimlich maneuver, or heaven forbid if that should happen to a person, we should note these things. Or if a person uh, goes into cardiac arrest, uh, has a heart attack, and we'd have to apply CPR, recita recitation movements, or for instance, we saw a small child, we should not know of such things, heading towards an electric socket, seeking a curiosity to stick the, his or her finger into the socket, and we're pulling them away. Well, obviously, we would impose our will upon the, those three examples in order to save them from, from injuring themselves and perhaps, heaven forbid, losing a life. That being said, blessed souls, a Torah lifestyle is not one involving manipulating the learner of Torah or the fulfiller of mitzvahs, whether you be of the children of Israel or of the children of Noah. In fact, what it is, is a lifestyle of an ascension and of awareness of how about embellishing one acts of kindness and goodness and staying away from acts which are evil. 
And acts of evil can be construed as acts involving physical action, as it's simply understood. Acts of evil with our speech, or even thoughts of evil towards others, and even upon ourselves. We have to be very careful to avoid having negative self-perceptions of ourselves. We should have honest self-perceptions of ourselves, but to, to, to immerse ourselves in negativity about our abilities, our lack of abilities, as opposed to from our awareness of what our weaknesses are, where can we go about embellishing our strengths to hopefully... So to speak, and you just schlep up our weaknesses so they become less weak and head in the direction of becoming uh, points of transformation within our human experience. Connecting this all now, blessed souls, at the end of this video with us of Israel getting ready for the celebratory days of Pesach. From now, basically, for the next 14 days, we'll be running around and cleaning and seeking to remove all 11 products from our house gradually and eventually the night before uh, Pesach, which would be Sunday night here in America. We will do a search in our houses and make a declaration that, as it says follow, the following, <clears throat> all 11 and 11 products that are in my possession, which I did not observe, did not dispose of, or do not know about, are hereby nullified and only like the dust of the earth. But how would that apply to a, a Ben Noach? And how does that apply on the spiritual level to a member of the Jewish Israelite nation? Well, leaven is likened to arrogance, blessed souls. So when we're seeking to remove from within ourselves arrogance, egotistical motivations to the exclusion of the higher good, service of the Creator, and in fellowship with our fellow human beings, we therefore have to make a declaration as members of the nation of Israel, to dispose on a physical level, on a mental level, leaven products, but understand that this is referring to we have to get rid of our egos and almost be cons and, and be like considered like the dust of the earth. The next day, at the end of the fifth hour, from the beginning of dawn, we burn whatever remnants of chametz, of leaven products that we might have in our household, and we recite the following prayer. May it be your will, God our God and God of our fathers, that just as I am disposing of the chametz from my home and property, so too may you dispose of all extraneous forces, remove the spirit of impurity from the earth, remove the evil inclination from us, and grant us a heart of flesh to serve you in truth. Consume all the opposing forces, all husks and all wickedness and smoke, and remove the dominion of evil from the heart. With a spirit of destruction and justice, eliminate all those who distress the Shekhinah, just as you destroyed Egypt and its gods in those days at this time. Amen. Salah. So again, what, what is the instruction, the universal instruction? But this is the, really how we're going to see in the future days and months and years and into eternity as when our blessed Mashiach, the Messiah, will be revealed, how he will be able to extract any site-specific teaching for the nation of Israel and not only apply it from a more interdimensional perspective of the Torah to also give it as an instruction for the nations of the world. So what is this extraneous forces, spirit of impurity? We've talked about the previous videos, Blessed Souls. We're talking about the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of unwarranted hatred, the spirit of senseless competition, which is serving and covering over like a filmy mist over the earth to blind and confuse too many of the children of man. And we also ask that the wickedness be burnt up like in, in smoke. So are we asking... On, a, on the most literal sense, all evil or evil people should be burnt up? Well, no, we want the evil people to get burnt up in a fire of tshuva, of returning back to the Most High. Because we know from the teachings of the first Lubavitch Rebbe, Vishnir Zaman of Liadi, that the, the fundamental principle, the secret, the, the inner dimension of the heart, has in it, when it the sword of Esh, the, the, the mystical principle of fire. So when our fire is burning up within ourselves, with true dedication to the Almighty, to humble ourselves before the Most High and accept our positions in life and rejoice that we have this very precious experience of human life, we can move on in a very humbled and contrite manner and also at the same time too simultaneously and not contradictory, as paradox as it may seem, in a joyful manner. So blessed soul, this is Don Zetikum signing off, wishing everyone a beautiful day. And let's burn up the evil within ourselves to prepare for this blessed day of creation. Rosh Kodesh Nisan, 5,070 years into the creation of open Nitzchi, an eternal way, in a peaceful and pleasant way.